Another short presentation from the PLC University. What is a PLC? This is the eighth in the Factory Rat series, and we're going to be talking about PLC communication, configuring communication drivers between your computer and the PLC. Regardless of the brand that you have a PLC, they all function the same way. There's a few differences in details and what you see on the screen, but the goal is going to be the same, and that is to configure drivers to communicate between Windows and that PLC. We're going to use the same PLC all the way through a number of these presentations. If you have a different brand, don't worry. They all function almost identically except for the graphical user interface that you use. These are the three COM ports on that PLC. At the top, you have a 9-pin sub-D shell. That's RS-232 DF1. And right below it, you have an 8-pin round DIN connector. That's also RS-232. And then you have a RJ45. Ethernet IP, not TCP IP, but Ethernet IP. And we're going to start with the driver that configures the COM port that is connected to the 9-pin sub-D shell. You can use either one of these cables depending on what you have for your computer hardware. The top one means that you need a 9-pin sub-D shell connector on the back of your computer. Most new computers don't have that. The one right below that has a USB connector and it has a converter and it doubles as a USB to the round pin, the round 8 pin DIN connector, and to the 9 pin sub D shell. We're going to do that top cable first. That's a CP3 cable. You start by opening RS links. What you don't see immediately is that there is an instance of RS who. I just uh, reduced it size so you could see that it is separate. And you can open RS who from this button up here in the upper left hand corner, RS who. And you can have as many open as you want. We only need one and these RS who are little apps that can browse a driver to see what that driver sees. I'll put that back. We And we have no drivers configured. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the double-headed snake, figure drivers, and you see there's no drivers configured, there's none listed, and if you didn't know any better, you would think you can't do anything. But there is a drop-down arrow, pick RS-232 DF1 devices, add new, accept the default name. Now you have to make a decision. This is the only thing that you have to do, and that is you have to know the COM port that your cable is plugged into. To find out what COM port your cable and adapter is plugged into, go to your computer right click and manage and open up computer management go to device manager and you will see ports com and lpt expand it and voila com3 if i were to unplug the cable right now that would disappear so you can close that go back to this query com3 auto configure and it comes up auto configuration success very briefly when you do auto configure it sends out a message over that adapter that cable hooked up to com3 if it hears nothing back it changes parameters sends it out again and it does that repeatedly every few milliseconds until it gets a response when it gets a response it says good those parameters are what is configured on the other end at the PLC and now they match. The driver configuration matches the PLC COM port configuration. Okay, and you're done. Now when you expand, you see you have the driver and it sees the Micrologix 1400 and that's all there is to it. Now this driver, the RS-232 DF1 is the most important driver because with this one, all that you have to do is an auto configure based on the COM port and you can and make contact with that PLC. You can download to it, you can get online with it, and from there you can set up your Ethernet port as well if you have an Ethernet port on your PLC. Not all PLCs have a 9-pin sub-D shell, and not all PLCs have a round 8-pin DIN connector. We did the 9-pin connector driver, now we're going to do the 8-pin. It's really basically the same driver. So I deleted the driver that we had, and I'm going to go to configure drivers, Pick RS-232 DF1 devices, add new, keep the default name. And because I know that the adapter, the USB to 9-pin RS-232 adapter is on COM3, I'll just select COM3, do an auto configure, and voila, there it is. Configured, close, 
and there's our factory rat Micrologix 1400. Now you can't see what I did of course, but what I did is I took out the 9 pin sub D shell to 9 pin sub D shell CP3 cable. I pulled it out and put in the PMO2 cable, connected it up to the USB 232 adapter and connected the other end into that round connector. And th look, this is the identical process that we did before. One was to the 9 pin sub D shell, the other was to the 8 pin round end connector. RS-232 DF1 is the most important because you can always get into the controller with this driver. Once you're in there, then you can alter the Ethernet. You can look to see what the Ethernet address is. You can do all types of things. This is not a network. It's a here to there, this to that, you to it connection. It's a direct connection, one end to the other end. There's no addressing. It's not a network. It's really simple. You just need to know what COM port you've got your device plugged into. Real quick, something I forgot is that normally you're going to see this Lynx Gateway Ethernet thing pop up in the default form for RS Lynx RS2 when you open it. I had already turned that off, so I'm going to go up here to View, Options, and unselect that because I never use that. And that is how to configure an RS-232 driver with RS Lynx. We will eventually do the Ethernet drivers, but we will cover a little on Ethernet and how to go online with a controller before we do that.